This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 225, Highbrow Mindfulness Tips. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you, too, can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there. Welcome in today. It's a holiday-ish week here in the States. It's that fun and just kind of weird time <laughs> that we celebrate our nation's independence by blowing stuff up and barbecuing things. But, you know, whatever. It is kind of fun. So there we go. Which means that today, July 5th, feels kind of like Saturday or Blur's Day or something. Who knows, right? It's summer. The fourth being on a Tuesday just makes the whole week weird. So I figure we'll maybe get back to regularly scheduled programming by, I don't know, say Monday of next week or so if we're lucky, right? So listen, I want to start something new here with you each week on the podcast. And that is, I want to set an intention for each week's episode with you. And I'd like to invite you to set an intention as you're listening Because I think it's helpful, I think it's important for us to ask ourselves, what are we doing here? What are we up to during this time together? So this week, the topic we're talking about is highbrow mindfulness tips. And my intention in planning and in sharing this episode with you is to give you some levity, (laughs) some lightness, but also some practical and really impactful ways to actually practice being mindful. Not in a serious way. We're not doing anything stuffy or overly earnest. Because to be honest, I can find the whole mindfulness and meditation worlds to be a bit on the serious and stuffy and overly earnest side. And I don't like it. So my intention with these tips is to share some light and tactical ways that you can implement these practices, but to do it in a way that's, well, kind of fun. Now, I'll be honest, I really don't think of myself as an overly fun person. (laughs) I'm a lot of things, but I don't know that fun is one of them. Now, that said, I also appreciate that most of us like doing things and will return to things that feel at least fun-esque, right? Fun adjacent. So that's my hope with this episode. That's the intention that I'm setting for today. And like I said, I would love for you, just as we're getting started here, to reflect and take a moment to consider what your intention is in listening today and joining in for this conversation And let's get to it. Some highbrow mindfulness tips to help transform anxiety. All right. One of my absolute favorites, something that's so easy, it's so simple to do. It takes no extra time. It won't cost you anything. And this is what I call bathroom meditations. (laughs) I told you this was highbrow, right? All you have to do is every time you go to the bathroom, you're going to take five to 10 deep breaths. That's it. Because here's what I figure. You're there anyway, right? You're a captive audience. You have the time because you're going to the bathroom. Your mind and your attention are available. You really don't have to think too hard to get that done. So you can breathe. And you go to the bathroom several times a day. So that gives you several opportunities to take five to 10 deep breaths throughout your day. And that's several more opportunities than you're likely taking already. So few of us take time to focus on our breath and really intentionally, mindfully breathe deeply and fully. 
And breathing is a really helpful, easy, useful way to shift anxiety. Now, I know, I know you've heard this a thousand times. Yes. And that's because it works. Now, I hear from some of you. I hear this from students sometimes. People will tell me, it doesn't work for me. Breathing doesn't do anything to slow down my anxiety. And listen, it does. <laughs> absolutely, it does. This is science. It absolutely works. Now, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It doesn't happen in two breaths forever. But lengthening and deepening your breath is a way to communicate backwards to your brain that you're safe, that you're okay, and that you don't need to panic. So you're using your body to send safety and security messages to your brain. Focus on your exhale. Okay, your body will naturally inhale when it needs to, but we're not great at fully and completely exhaling. So every time you go to the bathroom, you're going to take five or 10 deep breaths. You're going to really focus on exhaling all of the old stale air out of your body so that you can take in a full deep inhale, that fresh air, right? And then you're going to fully exhale again. So... That's highbrow mindfulness tip number one, bathroom meditations. All you have to do, five to 10 deep breaths every time you go to the bathroom. Yeah? Next, (laughs) this is a good one too. This is really one of my favorites. I promised you highbrow stuff. You ready? I feel like most of the teachings, what we learn in yoga and meditation and mindfulness And through thought work and just introspection and inner reflection can be boiled down to this next one, which is don't be a weirdo. (laughs) I love this one because again, lightness, right? A little humor. It always helps. This one is helpful most of the time. When you're struggling, when you're trying to figure out how to say something difficult to someone, when you're trying to get out of your own head, When you're trying to figure out the next best thing at work or at home or with your partner or your kid, this is usually applicable. Don't be a weirdo. Honestly, I'm still surprised how often this is useful. (laughs) I use this idea probably 10 times a week personally. Like if I'm trying to figure out how to say something, it's almost always beneficial to remind myself that whatever I say, however I'm going to frame it, If I can shake off any part of it that smacks of me being a weirdo, I'm definitely going to be better off. Like, think about it. Usually we're trying to convince someone of something, right? An extension on a deadline for a project or what to have for dinner or how best to handle a family member's complaint. Like in all cases, stop being a weirdo and then what comes up? Like if, if I'm going to try to ask for an extension on a deadline, let's say, and I'm beating around the bush, I'm trying to show my boss why it's okay, better even, right, to do it this way, and I'm reminding my boss that so-and-so didn't turn their project in on time, and I'm just generally trying to convince and kind of manipulate the whole situation, right? You cannot do that without being a weirdo. But if I remind myself, don't be a weirdo, And instead, I'm like, listen, here's what's going on with the project. We could use two extra weeks to get X, Y, and Z fully accomplished. We're going to make sure things are complete. And then I know we're going to get it to you. And it's going to, I'm going to be fully confident in it. Not a weirdo, right? This is what I mean. Look at how or if or where you're being a weirdo and then don't, right? Now, If you're a people pleaser, I want to just tell you that we people pleasers are the biggest weirdos. (laughs) Okay, it's true. Walking around trying to make everyone happy, shape shifting into who you think other people want you to be, trying to live up to everyone else's expectations of you and the societal roles you're playing and all of the cultural norms, it's a recipe for being a weirdo. 
When you can slow things down and remind yourself of this simple plan, don't be a weirdo, you'll see that some new new things come available. There's a lot of behaviors and ideas that just no longer apply. Now, spoiler alert, it's hard to be a people pleaser and not be a weirdo. Try it. (laughs) You'll see for yourself. So that's highbrow mindfulness tip number two. Don't be a weirdo. Okay. Now, this one sounds pretty weird, this next one, but this is a good way to go. It is bring your mind into your feet. Told (laughs) you. Sounds weird. But think about this. This is a yogic teaching. Bring your mind into your feet. And the idea is don't think so hard about it. Come down into your body. Feel it. See how your body responds to it. Check in with yourself. Don't always listen to your mind. Your brain is a thought-thinking machine. It's going to think thoughts incessantly, nonstop, forever. And they're just thoughts. We take them as some truth, some absolute knowledge from the beyond. And listen, Our minds are shameless. They'll think anything. I mean, really, think for a minute about how you trash talk yourself, how you judge other people, how petty and trite you can be about stuff, right? Me too. Me too. Our minds don't know. They just think things. It's like our minds can't handle any space or stillness or silence. So they're constantly rushing to fill up those spaces and those voids with just more and more thoughts. That ticker tape at the bottom of the, of the screen on the news channels, right? So this idea, bring your mind into your feet, is a reminder that there's more to you than what's going on between your ears. Just because you think it doesn't mean it is. So check in with the whole rest of you your heart, your gut. See how your chest and your belly and your throat are feeling. Those are three really common places for emotions and energy to get lodged. It's like we get these energetic traffic jams in our, in our bodies in those places. We don't even realize it, though. We're busy consulting only with our heads. So don't treat your body like it's a plant stand for your mind. You're a whole being. So bring your mind into your feet. Yeah? All right. Next idea, next tip, is to take it step by step. Now, this is annoying. (laughs) I get it. That's why it got lumped into the highbrow mindfulness episode, right? All we can ever do is take the step in front of us. Take that. Then the next step will present itself and then the next, and then the next. A lot of what I see students struggling with is trying to figure out step 17 and step 35 and step 72 before they've taken the first step. It's like we want a guarantee or some certainty or a crystal ball so that we can see how it's all going to go down. But pretty much every time, the only way to get to step two is by taking step one. The only path to step three is by taking step one and then step two. Always. Now I know we want to have the roadmap, right? Give me all the steps. I'll just execute them perfectly. I'll be happy and calm and successful and all will be well. But grasping for that, trying to live your life that way, it's missing the point. There is no step 10 without steps one through nine in that order first. It's required every single time. Now, this is just kind of another way to say, be present, right? Be here. Be in this moment. You can't figure out or control the future moments. All you can do is be here. And in the best case scenario, you can do what the poet David White teaches us which is you could be a good ancestor to your future self. 
You can perhaps set the next few versions of yourself up for success by taking this step and then this step and then this step. But you cannot ever, you cannot ever take a step out there, down the road, from here. It's so simple, right? Do things step by step. I know it's kind of annoying, but it's powerful because it's true. All right, lastly for today, one more highbrow tip for mindfulness. And that is get outside This one is not fancy, which is why it's included here. (laughs) But actually, to be honest with you, this one maybe is highbrow. There is a lot of science and research behind the healing balm of nature for humans. How our brains are tuned to birdsong. The benefits of being under lots of trees, what that does for us. How it feels to be in touch with the natural world and changing seasons to breathe fresh air, take in the plants and the trees and the animals, the water, the weather, the phases of the moon, the length of the days, all of it, take it in. Pay attention. Get to know your surroundings. Leave your phone at home. Listen and breathe. So get outside. Now, see, none of these are time-consuming, They don't really cost you anything. They don't take away from your day at all. I know that's one of the big pushbacks regarding mindfulness and meditation is people think to themselves, I don't have the time, which I will maybe argue in another episode. (laughs) But for now, I'll just point out, you don't need time. These are things you can do because you're doing them already. It just takes a certain amount of attention and intention. You have to remember to remember them. That's it. That's the only difference. Awareness. Mindfulness. Yeah? All right, my friend. That's what I've got for you this week. A few highbrow mindfulness tips, (laughs) which is obviously totally tongue-in-cheek because none of these are fancy or anything. They're just helpful, just practical. A few of them are even kind of silly and humorous. They're all accessible. They're all easy and simple to do. So put these into play. Like today, this week, use these. Don't just think about them. I promise you, it doesn't do any good if you're not living them. So apply these and let me know how it goes. I will see you at the same time, same place next week for more transforming anxiety. And until then, please take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one, and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you are creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash Fierce Calm Project.